Hey everyone, this is Rob, and today I'm going to show you how to do a 3D relief map on VCarve Pro. Here's an example of one I did. I'm going to remake this one basically for the video. This is a mountain range near where I grew up. This would be uh, Lake Marie up in Wyoming. Mesmo Peaks right through here. The Snowy Range goes quite a ways further than that. This part of the Snowy Range and the Medicine Bow National Forest. And it's about 45 minutes away from where I grew up, so it's kind of special to me. I made it out of maple. It's uh, 8 fourths, the starting piece, and so it's actually about 1.85 inch thick by the time you have some loss in there. So it's a pretty nice looking little map. I, I like it, though. It's kind of obscure. Not everyone's going to go for this, but I like it, so that's all that counts. So let's get started. First of all, there's a website out there called touchterrain.gol.iastate.edu. So Iowa State's doing this one. Uh, I have no affiliation with them, but thank you guys. I really do appreciate that. Uh, you can pick anywhere, anywhere you want in America. Basically, I'll zoom out here. It's a nice relief map. Easy to work with. And you can see right here it is Lake Marie. That's the same as we did before. So we're going to kind of recreate that. This is just easy to work with. Drag our borders in to where we want it. I think I want to get pretty tight definition. If you get really, if you expand out to a big area, you lose your definition because, of course, if something's even a mountain, let's say it's a mile high, but if you go to a square area of 10 miles, it's only a tenth of an inch high once you expand this out. So if you go to a tighter area, you get much better definition on the heights and changes, so it looks better if you go to a smaller area, I think, but that explanation probably didn't make much sense. But anyway, <laughs> trust me on that. So, it's pretty easy to do. We're going to click one there to save the URL, two to export, and three to start the process. Uh, yeah, your spinning wheel up here, it is working. It takes it probably 30 seconds or so to do this, so I'll probably cut out the video so you don't hear me talk and babble the whole time. Okay, and we are back. So now I'm going to download the file. And I'll save it. Open the folder, which is a zip file. Okay, here's the files in here. And the only one we care about is the STL file. So I'm just going to drag that to my desktop. It's off the screen, but you have to trust me. Okay, and we're done in that area. Let me open up um, vCarve Pro. And I'm going to do an area on this, a new file. I'm going to go oh, 7 wide and 10 tall. That should be about what we're looking for. 1.85 thick, that's what I want. And it's simple to pull this in. Model, the folder, on my desktops where it was, which then there it is. Okay. And for the why? I think I had 10 inches on that already, so let's go, let's see a little bit of spare area, but 9.75. And we're going to play it so applied. The other thing is sometimes on this one you need to raise this up, and sometimes you don't. You can see how it changes kind of a grayish color as you go up. This one's pretty good. I've had a few of these where I was playing with it where I had to raise it almost halfway up before it starts showing any changes because like here it's really thick at the bottom. If the whole thing's that way you'll have to raise it up or else you're going to waste a lot of space. So I'm good at that. Hit OK. And we're looking good. So on to tool paths next. So over to tool paths and let's go to 2D here. Click the item. And first I'll do a roughing pass. I always go a bigger bit to really hog out a little faster. Uh, I always go a few hundreds there on top. Uh, you know what, I skipped a step. Let's cancel this and go back to the other side. I forgot to open this up. Well, look how thick this shows the default. And 1.86. We told it our wood thickness is 1.85. That ain't gonna work. I'm going to leave a tenth of an inch in there, so I'll hit 175. 
Now we're with tool paths, and what do you know? There's no error now. Put a couple hundredths on top there for just in case. And OK. I use a 75 inch end mill, 0.75 inch end mill. This time we're going to just do the model boundary before I've done actually an uh, oval to go around that like the last one. We'll do keep it simple here. I always go outside the boundary for the clearing because I'll show you in a second. It makes more sense to show an example. Calculate. And my example, what I'm talking about is you can see how I use a the cheapest bit I can find. They're about an inch and a half long. And by the time I put it in the chuck, if I didn't have that 75.75 an inch extra on here, it would crash on the wood as it's cutting down. So I always have a bigger, when I hog out, I have a bigger edge on there. And go back to the view carve. Hopefully that made some sense. Okay. And close that. Now let's do the finishing. And again, I use just a ball nose, 0.125 inch. And a raster cut. Keep it simple. Calculate. Okay, it's done calculating. So let's go ahead and just reset and preview all. Of course, it's hogging out the stuff right now in the clearing. Now let's do the finishing. And there we go. And that's pretty much the model I had. Lake Marie's right through here, and there's another lake right through there, over there. So it's pretty much that easy to do these. Not that tough at all. So once again, to show how it all ends up, that's the finished product. We'll go back and forth a few times so you can kind of see what we're talking about. So, ta-da! Any questions, feel free to make comments, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks, everyone.